Just how much waste does Singapore produce daily? In 2017, we produced 8,443 tonnes of solid waste every day. That is the weight of about 5,600 cars. Despite the talk of Singapore becoming a zero-waste nation, our overall recycling rate is only 61% last year, which means there is still a large amount of waste that we have to process. So how do we manage all this waste? Currently, there are four public waste collectors appointed by the National Environment Agency that collect trash from both domestic and trade premises. They are Collex, Assam Waste, Viola ES and 800 Super. The public waste collectors are required by the National Recycling Programme to provide recycling bins like this and recycling collection services to all HDB estates and private properties that opt into the public waste collection scheme. Dedicated recycling trucks will collect the recyclables and send them to a materials recovery facility. This is where the recyclables are sorted and billed, and then sent to recycling plants either here in Singapore or overseas. The non-recyclables and trash thrown into the non-recycling bins are collected and brought to an incineration plant like this Tuas South Incineration Plant. This is one of four waste to energy plants that is located in Singapore. The others are Sinoco, Tuas and Keppel Sagas Tuas Waste to Energy Plant. Together, they incinerated a total of 7,800 tonnes of waste per day in 2017. Here at Tua South Incineration Plant, 3,400 tonnes of waste are incinerated every day in a continuous process. The heat produced during the incineration process is converted to electricity. About 1,600 megawatt hours of electricity is produced every day. That is enough to power about 125,000 four-room HDB flats. After the trash is dumped into this 32-meter-wide discharge chute, a staff member sitting in a control room that overlooks the area manipulates a huge grab crane and mixes the trash. This is to ensure that the waste consisting of various materials such as plastic, paper and food are mixed well. A consistent mix would allow the incinerator to operate efficiently. A final grab and 8 tons of rubbish are then thrown into the incinerator. The waste in the incinerator burns between 850 and 1000 degrees Celsius. The heat reduces the volume of the waste by 90%. What remains are ash and ferrous metals. The metals are separated and recycled. The ash and other non incinerable waste are then transported here to the Tuas Marine Transfer Station. This is where they are transferred onto barges, which will then take them to Samakau Landfill. The reception area has 20 overhanging discharge bays that allow for the tipper trucks to discharge their content straight onto the centre of the barge. Excavators then spread around the incineration ash and non-incinerable waste to ensure the barge is optimally loaded. When the ash and other non-incinerable waste are tipped into the barge, the water sprinkler system is activated to settle the dust particles. Once the barge is full, a hatch fully covers it to shield the contents from wind and water during the journey. Then a tugboat pushes the barge on a three-hour journey to Samakau Landfill. Smakau Landfill is Singapore's only landfill. It opened on 1st April 1999. Space constraints on mainland Singapore meant that this landfill had to be created. In 1995, construction began to build the world's first man-made offshore landfill. This was done by enclosing 350 hectares of sea space between Pulau Semakau and Pulau Saking with a 7km perimeter rock band. The band is lined with impermeable membrane and a layer of marine clay to ensure that leachate from the refuse is contained within the landfill area. Initially, there were 11 separate tipping cells. A tipping cell is where incinerated ash and non-incinerables are dumped into. 
These were filled up in 2016. Currently, the ash and non-incinerables are dumped into this large space measuring some 157 hectares. It is big enough to hold 6,680 Olympic-sized swimming pools worth of incinerated ash. This is projected to last us until at least 2035. When the transport barges arrive in Samakau, large excavators unload the waste from the barges and onto a 35-ton off-road dump truck. The dump trucks arrive on this specially built 200 meter long floating platform. This is where they unload the ash. This floating platform is able to move so as to spread the ash over the cell. When a cell is filled up, a layer of earth is placed over it. As you can see, this area is now covered with trees and grass, which is proof you can turn a dumping ground into a green space. What happens if the Macau landfills get filled up? Well, obviously we will have to find another landfill space. Singapore being Singapore, I say like it's land constrained, right? Uh, we'll find that it, it will be a challenge to do so. Well, I can't say it's impossible, but it will be a challenge. So we will need to figure out, first and foremost, where the location has to be. Can it be sited right next to this, the current Samaka landfill or should it be somewhere that is totally new? But all this we will have to provide time Right, yeah. well beforehand, plan well beforehand before we can actually uh, ascertain okay, where is the, the next spot. The approach that we are taking is other than finding an alternative landfill space, but we are also trying to prolong the lifespan of, of the market landfill. Now, what's coming up next is that we will also be looking into the treatment of insulation bottom ash so that they can be reused uh, for land applications such as non structural concrete and all that. And if you are, once you are able to do that, then that will mean that there will be even lesser waste for landfilling. We are aiming to become a zero waste nation by mainly reducing our waste generation, by reusing and recycling. We call it the three R's. By 2030, we are trying to get an overall recycling rate of 70%. Samakau Landfill is indeed an engineering marvel. Even though Singapore has taken many steps to extend its lifespan, the fact remains that it is limited. We produce a lot of waste and a lot of effort has been put in to manage this waste. While we think about what we throw and what we recycle, perhaps more importantly, we need to examine what we consume.